Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be watching some more Star Trek, the original series. Since I am a few episodes ahead of when these go onto YouTube, there is quite a delay between uh, when I record these and then when I edit these. I just showed you guys the reaction, or at least I showed YouTube the reaction to Cat's Paw. This is the fifth episode that I'll be recording for season two. And, um, well, quite a few people were a little bit upset that I was watching in the incorrect order. Now, when I first started the first season, a lot of people were telling me, like, you have to watch it in production order because it doesn't make sense otherwise. It wasn't the order that the executives or, like, the producers or whoever, like, the network wanted them to do something and they wanted to do something else. So... They couldn't release it in the right order. So people wanted me to watch in production order, so I did. And I thought that I just would keep doing that till the end. I thought that's what people wanted. Apparently, I was wrong that after season one, I guess it's recommended that I watch in air date order because the writers and Gene Roddenberry and all that stuff, they were able to kind of have a little bit more freedom to air the episodes in the order that they wanted to. So once again, I'm doing it wrong. People are hollering at me for it and getting all upset saying I skipped episodes. I'm not going to skip any episodes, guys. I'm going to watch them all. And since I learned this information finally that production order is not necessary anymore, we're going to now switch gears and I'm just going to do it in air date order. I'm sure there's still going to be people who are going to be upset, but I'm guessing that maybe not so much this time. So the next episode for me to watch is episode three, since I've already watched episode one, Amok Time, and episode two, which was um, Who Mourns for Adonais. So now we're going to be watching The Changeling, which is episode three. I hope you guys do understand that I am doing my very best to make everybody happy, but it is an impossible task because everybody wants something different. But thank you to the person who mentioned that, you know, this doesn't really matter to go in production order anymore and explained why. And I agree with that logic and I think, yeah, we're going to go in air date order. So, the changeling. Let's do it. Any response from Malurians, Lieutenant? Nothing since their original distress call, sir. They have to answer. The last census reported a total inhabitation of more than four billion people. I register no life readings at all, sir. That's scary. That shield's just snapped on. Something heading in at multi-warp speeds. An extremely powerful bolt of energy, Captain. Grab on to something, guys. Grab on to something! <laughs> Imagine being in that situation. Like, you start doing evasive maneuvers. You put your shields up, all you can do is just watch this thing come at you and just pray that you're still going to be alive in the next few seconds. Lieutenant, contact Starfleet Command. Patch in my log, tell them what has happened. Tell them that the entire Malurian race seems to have been destroyed by an unknown agency. Did four billion people really just vanish like that? <laughs> Thing's so puny compared to theirs. They're empty. No effect. Target absorbed full energy of our torpedo. What could have absorbed that much energy and survived? Lieutenant, try to make contact. Aye, sir. To unidentified vessel, this is Captain James Kirk of the USS Enterprise. We are on a peaceful mission. Please communicate with us. Please. Weight, 500 kilograms. Shape, roughly cylindrical. Well, at least it's not another giant Length. hand. Fraction over one meter. Captain, we're getting a signal from the spacecraft. Captain, this message is a sort of binary. Extremely sophisticated. It's mathematical. Yes, one symbol. The symbol repeat. It's an old-style interplanetary code. We request... Identity. It's another signal now, sir. They're sending us a mathematical message. Uh. They're trying to communicate. 
They're trying to communicate with math? No, get me out of here. Mm -mm. Captain, the message is coming in now. USS Enterprise, this is Nomad. My mission is non-hostile. Okay. They seemed pretty hostile, just saying. It is impossible to come aboard your ship because of the size differential. Non sequitur, your facts are uncoordinated. Excuse you? We are prepared to beam you aboard our ship. That will be satisfactory. Captain, you're not really going to bring that thing in here. Do we have any choice, Scotty? So this thing is in a tiny little cylinder? And it threw that much power at us? Is that their whole ship, or...? What do we do now? Go up and knock? Relate your point of origin. We are from the United Federation of Planets. Insufficient response. If you care to leave your ship, we'll provide the necessary life support systems. Your facts are uncoordinated. He's saying that. I don't think anybody's in there. Yeah. I am Nomad. In my opinion, that's a machine. It has changed since the point of origin. There was much taken from the other. I am perpetual now. Isn't there a probe called Nomad launched in the early 2000s? Yes, it was reported destroyed. I will scan your star charts. How was something they sent in the- I will bring them. I have the capability of movement within your ship. This is weird. This way. <laughs> well, it sure is scary having something that powerful and emotionless who probably wouldn't think twice about just destroying everybody if it wanted to for whatever reason. And the communication barrier. This is our point of origin. The planet is called Earth. Yes. You are the creator. The Kirk. The this Kirk? sterilization procedure against your ship was unnecessary. You programmed my function. Well, I'm not the Kirk. Tell me what your function is. <laughs> my function is to probe for biological infestations, to destroy that which is not perfect. Oh, no. What? Biological infestation. There was never any probes sent out for that. So it just wiped out that whole population? Only the unstable biological infestation. The population of four planets? What kind of function, Doctor? That's heartbreaking. Why you call me the creator? Is the usage incorrect? Well, I... The usage is correct, old man. Mr. Singh, this unit will see to your needs. Sir? I'll be back in a moment, gentlemen. You're going to leave me here with that? You're out of something, Spock. What is it? I'm convinced that this object is indeed that probe. Nomad was destroyed. I submit that it was badly damaged and somehow managed to repair itself. Its mission was essentially peaceful. Well, I mean, it feels that it's being peaceful and just doing its job. Wiping out infestations. Don't get too close to that thing. Lieutenant Singh here. All systems are normal, except warp power indicators. Oh, one moment, Lieutenant. Holding. Does it like the singing? Where is it going? Oh, is it going to find her? This is the creator of Nomad. He doesn't really look like Kirk. But was his name Kirk? You recall his name. Of course, Jackson Roy Kirk. Roy Kirk. Roy Kirk, Captain James Kirk. Similar. Captain, I, I believe that Nomad thinks you are Roy Kirk. That may well be why the attack was broken off. Well, that's not the same. Essentially, it is, Doctor. It mentioned the other. The unanswered question is the other what? Oh, something repaired it? Supposed to be the first interstellar probe to seek out new life forms. It would seem that Nomad is now seeking out perfect life forms. Terrifying. And we've taken aboard our vessel, a device which sooner or later must destroy it. The mechanism we brought aboard is in the auxiliary control room. Not anymore. That mechanical beastie is up here. On my way, Scotty. <laughs> what 
form of communication. Singing. I was singing. For what purpose is singing? I felt like music. What is music? Whoa. Lieutenant, keep away from my study. Oh, jeez. Don't say it. He's dead, Jim. He said it. Oh, he mad. He, he'll be okay. He'll be okay. I have it on good authority that he'll be okay. That unit was my chief engineer. Lieutenant, are you all right? Oh, no. What'd you do to her? That unit is defective. Its thinking is chaotic. That unit is a woman. A mass of conflicting impulses. It's got down below. Oh. Will the creator effect repairs on the unit, Scott? He's dead. Does the creator wish me to repair the unit? There's nothing I can do, Jim. He's a doctor, not a miracle worker. Repair the unit. I require tapes on the structure. I have arranged the tapes for flash feed at the top speed of the computer. Oh yeah, that thing was talking to them in binary at the start. The unit Scott is a primitive structure. Breakdown can occur from many causes. Yeah, like what you did? It serves me as it is, Nomad. Repair it. Body is in sick bay. Show me sick bay. <sighs> nice camera angle, I like this. Whoa. What are the lot of you staring at me for? It's unbelievable. Fascinating. We just want to check you out. The unit, Scott, is repaired. I'd like to check it out if you don't mind. A man is not just a biological unit that you can patch together. What did it do to me? <laughs> you don't want to know. Repair that unit. Not possible. The knowledge banks of this unit have been wiped clean. Oh. Study of it would be of great use, Captain. Can we just get rid of it? Down to the brig with your equipment, run a full analysis on the mechanism. I want to know what makes that thing tick. Yes, sir. So this is an episode where Spock can really shine because he can understand the, f like, pure logical thinking of this device. I have been unable to convince Nomad to lower his screens for analysis. Without his cooperation, I can do nothing. You will allow Mr. Spock to probe your memory banks and structure. This unit is different. It is well ordered. My screens are down. Thank you. You may proceed. It'll be very dangerous if that thing realizes that Kirk is not the Kirk. I sound it out. Run. That's it, Uhura. That's very good. The dog has a mm, not not Swahili Uhura in English the dog has a ball that's right. <laughs> oh, that's well she's still right. got every it's I mean it seems like she's still got the information in there do you think we can re-educate her doctor well she checks out with no brain damage we've got all the educational tapes in our library well is her whole memory erased too e well, she looks adorable, though. And they agree. Louis? <laughs> it is not sufficient, Captain. Captain, I suggest the Vulcan mind probe. Oh. With the machine? There is a risk, but I have formed a partial hypothesis. I mean, we don't have any other ideas, do we? So he's mind melded a human? A horda? And now a nomad probe. I am nomad. Collision. Damage. I am the other. Imperfection. Must sterilize. Sterilize what? Rebirth. We are complete. Much 
power, search out, identify, sterilize imperfections. I don't get it. Did it fuse with somebody we called Tanru? Are nomad. Nomad. Sterilize. Nomad. Sterilize. Jeez. Did he get memory wiped? The knowledge. The depth. Oh, he's fine. It was it was damaged in deep space. And then it met the other. The other was an alien probe of great power. Somehow they merged, repaired each other, became one. Oh. The other was originally programmed to secure and sterilize soil samples from oh, other planets. Oh no, I see what happened here. So one to seek out life and one to sterilize and then combined the directives. An ancient earth legend, fairy child that was left in place for a human baby. The changeling assumed the identity of the human child. Oh, I've heard of this before, I think. It's powerful, sophisticated, but it's not infallible. It's space happy. It thinks I'm its mother. Very fortunate that he has a last name similar to the one who created this thing. Oh, it's kind of similar to the force field we saw in, in Where No Man Has Gone Before. Oh no. They got sterilized. They shouldn't have shot at it. What are you doing here? Don't yell at that thing. This primitive matter antimatter propulsion system is the main drive. Why? Inefficiency exists in the antimatter input valve. I will effect repair. How are you doing that? Is he going to give us an upgrade? More maintenance, Scott. And increasing. More ten, Mr. Scott. What? Impossible. It can't go that fast. It can now. Is there a problem, Creator? You will destroy my ship. Turn off your repair operation. Acknowledged. Aw, we should have kept a little bit of that juice. I've examined the brig. The force field door on the security cell is damaged, and the guards have vanished. I must assume they are dead. You killed two of my... Creator, your biological units are inefficient. I'm a biological unit, and I created you. Non-sequitur. Oh, this crap again? No, Matt, there are two men waiting outside. They will escort you back to the waiting area. I am programmed to investigate. I have given you new programming. I must re-evaluate. <laughs> oh, man. I love the, like, the camera shots here following this guy. I suspect it is about to re-evaluate his creator. Even worse. Nomad just now made a reference to its launch point, Earth. And we've shown it the way home. And when it gets there. Sterilize. Sterilize. And all those people will be gone without a trace. Hey! Nomad, stop! Stop shooting at it! Oh my gosh, what are they trying to do? These dummies. No man. Stop. No man, stop! It's not no listening man. anymore. Oh no! No man, examine the personnel files and the medical history. Whose history? Yours. Ooh. Rich to Captain. Kirk here. Life support systems are out all over the ship. No man. Undoubtedly. Stop what you're doing. And affect repairs on the life support systems. You're programmed to obey the orders of your creator. I am programmed to destroy those life forms which are imperfect. No man. I admit Here we go. biological units are imperfect. You are in error. You are a biological unit. You are imperfect. I created you? You are the creator. But I admit I am imperfect. How could I have created such a perfect thing as you? Answer unknown. I shall analyze. What are those? Are those guns? Analysis complete. I shall return to launch point Earth. I shall sterilize. Everything that is in error must be sterilized. There are no exceptions. Oh. Now he has to just prove 
that the nomad is an error. I am the Kirk, the creator. You are the creator. You're wrong. Jackson Roy Kirk, your creator, is dead. You have mistaken me for him. You are in error. 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 Execute your prime function. I shall analyze. Now, get those anti-grabs on it. Oh, those are Error. not guns. <laughs> We've got to get rid of them while it's trying to think. Error. Control the deep space. 210 Mark 1. Python. Are they going to smash it? Throw it out of the ship and then smash it? Okay. It's off the ship, but we have to stop it. Oh, we blew it up? Oh, I thought... I thought Kirk was going to talk it into destroying itself. Thought you might like to know that Lieutenant Uhura is back to college level. We should have her back on the job within a week. Good, Bones. Good. The destruction of Nomad was a great waste, Captain. What are you feeling so badly about? It's not easy to lose a bright and promising son. Sir. It thought I was its mother, didn't it? You saw what it did for Scotty. What a doctor it would have made. My son. The doctor. Well, gets you right there. <laughs> okay, Captain, whatever you say. Hmm, the changeling. Interesting, interesting, fascinating, one might even say. I liked that we got some really good Bones, Spock, Kirk, but also Scotty and Uhura moments. I guess it wiped Uhura's, like, technical knowledge, um, not so much her memories. I mean, they didn't really clarify that, but I'm just going to assume because I think she and everybody else would be a lot more upset if she had like her complete lifetime of memories just completely erased. We got her singing and looking absolutely adorable, trying to read her little uh thing there. I liked Spock really taking charge with knowing exactly how to deal with this thing, realizing that they needed to use it to their advantage, that Kirk um, was being mistaken for Roy Kirk and also keeping uh, Bones in line and not getting too um, emotional and aggressive on that thing. We had a very different kind of mind meld this time. With the one that we had in Dagger of the Mind, I don't remember the guy's name, and also with the Horda, they were very emotional mind melds. Lots of pain, lots of suffering, and this one was very different. Very, very different. I wish we could have gotten a little bit more of how Spock felt about that, what it was like, and uh, if he enjoyed it or not. He said that he enjoyed the logical mind of the Horda. I wonder how he felt about this one being like pure logic, and I just really liked the idea of the two like probes combining together, repairing each other, and then getting kind of intermeshed in and intermingled with their directives and taking two very passive and peaceful jobs and combining them together to make something absolutely horrifying and quite the opposite and very destructive. That's a really scary thing, but geez, four billion people just vanished, just died. And that's, that's a really heavy thing that I'm not really sure if there was enough time spent on just thinking about the gravity of that situation. Maybe, I mean, maybe there was. I don't know what I'm asking for, but maybe a little bit of a pause, moment of silence. But they were trying to survive themselves. They had Scotty being killed and brought back to life and with the Hura. So that was a pretty interesting episode. I think I like it when the adversaries are more human um, than kind of trying to go against the logic of a computer being. I don't know if it's really my cup of tea, but it was a pretty fun episode. There were definitely some good moments. I thought that Kirk was going to get this thing to see the error in its logic and that it wasn't um, completely perfect and that it would kill itself, but I guess instead he just got it thinking long enough that they were able to deal with it while it was still trying to compute and, you know, try to figure out what was going on with um, its programming and its potential errors and things like that. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one with me. I thank you guys so much for being here and I will see you guys in the next one. Let me know what you thought and take care. Okay, bye-bye.